U.S. government scientists say sea level rise will combine with a continental sagging effect to hit the Texas and Florida coastlines hard with increased coastal flooding. Galveston in Texas is expected to sink as much as 25 inches by 2050. Here are the details. The U.S. National Ocean Service, or NOAA, published a report on Tuesday, February 15th, warning that sea levels along the U.S. coastline are projected to rise an average of 10 to 12 inches in the next 30 years, which will be as much as the rise measured over the last 100 years, from 1920 to 2020. The NOAA report says the sea level rise will vary regionally along the U.S. coastlines, not just because of the global rise of ocean height, but also because of differences in the relative movement of land height. That's because the southeastern part of the U.S. landmass is projected to sag much more than the northwestern part, which is why the sea level is expected to rise a whopping 25 inches in Galveston, Texas, but only 9 inches in Seattle. The NOAA warns that Galveston and cities on the East Coast would experience many more damaging storm surges, while so-called sunny day floods during high tides will happen more often and cause more damage. The lead author of the new NOAA report is oceanographer William Sweet. He says the scariest thing about global sea level rise is that the effects of the current melting of Earth's ice sheets will only start to hit at the end of this century. A team of scientists who study the world's ocean currents say the increased melting of Arctic freshwater is causing an imbalance in the salinity of seawater in the North Atlantic. They say this could lead to a very sudden shutdown of the current that carries warm water to the planet's northern reaches, causing a sudden and dramatic drop in temperatures in North America and Europe, as well as disastrous food shortages worldwide. Here are the details. The Guardian reports that climate scientists have detected warning signs of the collapse of the Gulf Stream, one of the planet's main potential tipping points. The research found an almost complete loss of stability over the last century, of the currents that researchers call the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation, or AMOC. The currents are already at their slowest point in at least 1,600 years, but the new analysis shows they may be nearing a shutdown. Such an event would have catastrophic consequences around the world, severely disrupting the rains that billions of people depend on for food in India, South America, and West Africa. While increasing storms and lowering temperatures in Europe, the AMOC is driven by dense, salty seawater sinking into the Arctic Ocean, with the melting of fresh water from Greenland's ice sheet is slowing the process down earlier than climate models suggested. The analysis was based on fingerprints the AMOC leaves in surface temperature and salinity patterns. It showed a critical threshold is being reached beyond which the system may collapse. While the scientists are sounding the alarm, others sound less certain. David Thornally of University College London, whose work show the AMOC is at its weakest point in 1,600 years, said, The signs of decreasing stability are concerning, but we still don't know if a collapse will occur or how close we might be to it. The recent heat wave in the states of Oregon and Washington caused a lot of damage to roadways. In one post on Twitter, a user based in Portland shared photos of a nearby road and said their house began to shake as the road's concrete started to split. The user wrote, The house started to shake and we thought it was an earthquake. But no, the road was so hot it literally buckled. Here's how it happened. Newsweek reports that roads are buckling and breaking apart from the unprecedented hot weather that's been hitting the Pacific Northwest region of the U.S. In the usually cool Portland, temperatures soared to 47 degrees Celsius on Monday, June 28th. Scientists say the problem is that Oregon's roadways were not designed to survive such heat. These roadways are made of concrete slabs that contract in cold weather and expand in hot weather. The slabs were shaped with gaps between them, and these gaps are there to create room for the concrete when it expands. However, these gaps are only big enough to make room for the kind of expansion that happens during normal temperature highs, and the recent heat wave created temperatures so high that the concrete slabs expanded so much that they pushed against each other, causing the slabs to break and buckle. Roads that were made of asphalt, on the other hand, often became so hot that they became soft like toffee, and thus became deformed by large numbers of heavy vehicles driving over them. Meanwhile, workers ventured out last week in the blistering heat to put cracked concrete and asphalt roadways back together. Steel drawbridges were doused with water to make sure they wouldn't swell shut under the oppressive heat. North of the border, a weather station in Lytton, British Columbia, notched the highest temperature in Canada's recorded history, a mind-melting 121 degrees Fahrenheit, or 49.6 degrees Celsius. Soon after that, the town was destroyed by a wildfire. 
Scientists have recently started using satellites to measure the patterns of ice melt over the massive Greenland ice sheet. They made some alarming discoveries. Here are the details. Scientists published a new study in the journal Nature Communications in which they show that Greenland's ice sheet is melting at such a fast pace that it's heightening worldwide flood risks. The study, which was published on Monday, November 1st, also found that the Greenland ice sheet has lost more than 3.5 trillion tons of ice over the past decade, which increased global sea levels by one centimeter. This one ice sheet contains enough ice to raise global sea levels by 6 meters, or 20 feet, and it has been experiencing an increasing number of extreme melting events over the past 40 years. The new research is the first to use satellite data to detect Greenland ice sheet runoff. Satellite images showed significant annual variation in ice melt and showed that heat waves were increasingly a major cause of ice loss above and beyond global temperature increases. In 2012 alone, for example, when changes in atmospheric patterns caused unusually warm air to hover over the ice sheet for weeks, 527 billion tons of ice was lost. The lead author of the study, Thomas Slater of the University of Leeds, says, as our climate warms, it's reasonable to expect that the instances of extreme melting in Greenland will happen more often. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.